by who you are, then there's something wrong with your testimony. Why should they come and serve your God when your God couldn't change you? Apostolic oneness. I often say to the Trinitarians, and I know we don't talk about this much, if you're having problems serving three gods, why are you getting on me for serving one? I'll let you think about that on your way back down the highway. See, you have to understand something. God is calling us back to real biblical holiness. Not this play stuff that's being put out now. Real holiness that extends itself beyond just the service, just beyond church service, beyond a form of religion. True holiness that translates into your everyday life. This is what God is calling for. Now, I'm not a make you jump on this chandeliers type preacher. Y'all know how I roll. Whatever God say, that's what I play. Right. Amen. We thank God for the theme tonight, and this is where we're going to read from 2 Timothy 1 and 7, but we're going to put verse 8 with it, and then we're going to jump over to verse 13. I'm not going to be long tonight, so if you want to get you some ribs, chicken, hamburgers, or whatever before they close, you'll be able to get there tonight. Second Timothy 1, 7, 8, and 13. Man, I thank God for all the years of being a part of this body. I remember all the seven up services, you know, where they give you seven minutes, and then you got to call it a day. I may have to pull up some of that experience tonight. Amen. It says, for God have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partakers of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Over to verse 13, it says, hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Then I'm going to take you over to chapter 2, verse 1. It says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 2, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Verse 3, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We're going to use for a thought tonight. The Lord gave me something while I was praising him. It says, don't drop the baton. Look at your neighbor and say, don't drop the baton. You may be seated. All month long been struggling, like, Lord, what to say? All kind of stuff. And I found out that God will give you private messages for yourself to prepare you for the one he wants you to have when he give it to you. Paul is writing to Timothy a farewell letter. He's letting him know, he said, now I'm going to paraphrase a little bit, so don't y'all be looking like, well, that ain't in there. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, I got some jokes too, yeah. <laughs> Paul is telling Timothy, he says, look, son, I've reached the end of my ministry. I'm getting ready to go off the scene. But I want to write you to encourage you about some things that you're going to endure and have to endure in carrying this gospel. And he's letting him know, he's now, now, Timothy, now me and your grandma have put some things in you. I know you're strong in the faith, but I'm looking at you and you're a little bit too timid. 
it, it, it's time for you to get some guts and some backbone because now I'm getting ready to leave and you're going to have to carry on. And Paul is telling Timothy, he said, listen, this spirit that you're displaying, God having given us the spirit of cowardice. He says, but of love, power, and of sound mind. He said, don't be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Uh, we live in a day now where people are not really as bold about talking about Jesus as they are talking about, what was that? It was just on the, the NBA finals. People are not as bold at talking about Jesus Christ as they are the football teams. They're not as bold at talking about Jesus as they are where they got their latest pair of shoes from, their latest suit from. But Paul is telling Timothy, he said, I want you to not be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord, nor be ashamed of me. We seem to think now in this day that it's almost taboo to talk about where we came from. There's a scripture that says not to remove the ancient landmark. There's another scripture that talks about look for the old path. We seem to think that it's, it's, it's not cool anymore to talk about how the old saints made it over and the testimonies that they had. But he is saying, don't be ashamed of me. And I want you to be a partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. Can I inform you of something tonight? We are at war. We are at war. Have you looked around your neighborhood lately? You ever see where they have the shootings in the neighborhood and the first thing you hear the people say, I never thought that would happen here. Well, I never thought, I never expected to see that here. But now as we move towards the closing hours of humanity, Satan is stepping his game up. Guess what that means for us? We got to step our game up. If they out there at the streets witnessing all the stuff that they do, where are we at? We can't wait for them to come in. We got to go out and get them. But in order to go out and get them, God has got to fill us full of the Holy Ghost that makes us bold enough to take a licking and keep on ticking. This means we can't be afraid to get spit on. Listen, I know we like to dress up good and everything, but it's time to take off the dress shoes and put on some work boots and go walk in the streets in your neighborhood. Why the drug dealers and everybody got all the streets and we're not out there telling them about the love and the power of Jesus Christ. We are at war. Sexual diseases are going off the chart. The family is under attack. The divorce rate in the church is higher than it is in the world. We are at war. And now it comes time where you've got to put up or shut up. You've got to step to the devil now because now he's not just outside carrying signs. He will walk into the church. You ever see people come in and they ain't been saved no time and they want to tell you how to run the service. You don't know Jesus like that yet. What does that mean? You got to sit down and be taught something. You got to sit down and be instructed. I know this is not popular, so what? We got a problem tonight, saints. We are at war. We can no longer do this. Because the longer we do this, Satan is moving in. All he needs is a crack. All he needs is a crack. Listen, he don't care if you come to church and sing and dance. He don't care if you go and preach as long as you go home and tear up everything. He don't care about your big testimony in church as long as you go back on your job and you start laughing at the dirty jokes. He don't care. He don't care. Listen, 
We appreciate that you're getting the education. I believe in education. It's great. But education minus salvation equals damnation. If Jesus is not kept to the forefront of everything you're doing, guess what? Your education will become your God. He tells them to hold for fast the form of sound words. There are things that we are being taught in the church that we need to hold on to. We can't just throw everything out. Well, that's what the old folks did. Well, that's the way they used to do it. Well, guess what? What if it worked? What if it really worked? Oh, I'm going to get in some trouble now. What if Terry service really worked? What if speaking in tongues really works? What if the laying of hands on people and casting devils out instead of making them head of auxiliaries really works? What if it works to open the rebuke someone causing trouble in the church? What if it really works? What say of the scriptures? Mark them. That so discord among the brethren. What if setting them down really works? What if it really works to make people wait after they come into church and really learn what it means to be saved before they start leading devotion service? Oh, I know that's, oh, you, you can't say that, Brother Chuck. I just did. I'm moving by the power of the Holy Ghost. I've been in church a long time, too. I know what works and don't work. What if this thing really works? To do it the way the Bible said to do it. Yes, I understand. You got to catch the fish before you get skinned. it. Yes, I understand. You got to bring them in and walk them along the way. But after five or three, six years... You still struggling? After five or six years, you still got your boyfriend living in the house with you? You still sneaking around to see that girl? You still watching the dirty movies that you think nobody can see? You still engaging in that emotional affair? You didn't lay your hands on her, but you sharing secrets that you shouldn't? You still sitting at the feet of them strange prophets and then you bring that stuff into the church and say, God gave me something? You lying on the Holy Ghost? You think that's all right? That's not holding fast to the form. And listen, I've been preaching so long, I don't care who likes it, don't. I'm not giving you my words. This is what God is saying. He's saying that it's time to get back to the thing that distinguished us as a people. Have you ever wondered why we can have high services but nobody leaves out delivered? Why devil possessed people can come to the altar, receive prayer, and leave away from the altar still possessed? Why is that? Because there's sin in the camp. Sin in the camp. Something's hidden. And the Lord gave me this phrase and I said, Lord, I will not say it. I won't write it down unless you bring it back to my remembrance. He said, I am going to shake the trees. If, if, if a fruit is not connected to that tree and it gets shook, it's going to fall. If you're not really in there, not really saved, not really sanctified, we don't talk about the sanctification too much, that pulling away of stuff. If you still coming to church talking about, yeah, I've been with Jesus all week, but you all into that TV show scandal. See, Satan can indoctrinate you by getting you to watch his TV shows. You say, well, I didn't. I was just watching it. It's got some good writing in it. 
Listen, it's about this lady sleeping around with the president, secret service guys, whoever she wants, and it should be called How to Sleep Your Way to Success. Can I show y'all something? Now, I don't do this one too often, but I'm going to show you something. See, a lot of times when you hear words like this, be like, well, we was just shouting and dancing. Now, I don't feel happy about that. And that don't really seem like no real word from God. Let me give you a fast forward to the future while I'm telling you all this. See, what's happening is, is that the Lord informed me that leaders all over the globe are concerned that if they close their eyes, there is nobody strong enough to succeed them in carrying the gospel the way it's been written. And instead of fighting Satan, they will start to compromise with him. They are concerned all over the globe. Restless nights. God, who's going to carry this gospel the way it's written on? So watch this. I don't do this one too often. See over here, there's a screen right here. And see over here, there's a screen right here. On that day when you stand before Jesus Christ, this screen is going to represent what everybody else saw. This screen is going to represent what you were thinking. So over here, you'll say, I love the Lord. Over here, God will show what your heart was thinking. Over here will show how you were singing and you were saying and you were preaching and you were doing all these works. And over here will show what was really going on in your heart. Over here will show you saying, praise the Lord. I'm so glad to see you. And over here is going to show, I can't wait till you leave. Over here is going to show all the testimonies you gave. And over here is going to show the truth. Your actions and your thoughts. On that day, the secrets of men will be presented. And God is giving you a chance right now to fix it before you stand before him on that day. That day is coming. God does not take lightly when you make a vow to him and you don't hold to that vow. Some of you in here are preachers and said, I am not going to preach no more because the people made me upset and I'm throwing my robe down and I'm not going to say what you said to say to me, God, because of the fear of the people. He said, how dare you made a vow to preach my word until the day you die." And because the people were looking at you funny, you changed it. You said I would stand and carry your word and preach it in season and out of season. But then you flaked. Let me speak to you young people real quickly. Some of you are in elementary school. Some of you are in middle school. Some of you are in high school. You say, well, I had to wait till I get older that God calls me. But I feel a call of God on my life. And what God is telling you is, yes, I am calling you, but I expect you to do some things at home first. Which means that if you are called, then you have to start obeying mama and daddy first. You got to start honoring mother and father first. Not your friend, not your teacher, not grandma and grandpa over mommy and daddy. Because how you going to clean up the world when you won't clean up your room? That's practical gospel right there. I know this ain't fancy. This is where real holiness come in at. God is calling some of you who are not saved yet. He said, I'm pulling and tugging at you to get filled with the Holy Ghost. But you just keep leaning back. Well, God, I ain't, I ain't really ready yet. Have you seen the graveyards? 
Wasn't that a shame what happened at Sandy Hook? They just walked, what if they walk in your school? And you heard the word at the convention. And you rejected Jesus Christ. I know this is hard. But God is calling for you to give your life to him. You're not guaranteed to even make it past this convention. But he's calling you to a life of holiness. He's calling you to give your life to them. Don't disrespect the saints talking back all the time. I didn't do that. And you ain't my mama and daddy. See, what has happened is they got parents trying to be friends with the children instead of being parents. This means that sometimes you got to be sat down and talked to, and sometimes you got to get the left hand of fellowship. <laughs> now, now, you may be saying, well, now, wait a minute now. That ain't in context of that scripture. Wait a minute. That don't have nothing to do with that verse. If you can't do the word at home, why do it at church? The sin you won't confront privately, you shouldn't, you won't do it publicly. And we have a lot of things going on at home that you need the spirit of God and you need power to confront. The Bible tells the husband, be not bitter with your wife lest your prayers be hindered. So you can't be smacking sister girlfriend around at home or talking to her all crazy and come to church. Oh, you praise the Lord. I'm blessed and highly favored. You are a liar. God not going to bless your works. Sisters, the Bible says to be subject to your own husband. So don't be running to the church all the time and you ain't got stuff done at home first. Take care of home first. He said, you got some nerve saying that. Yeah, you might be right. I didn't have it before the Lord met me up here, but I got it now. I'm going to tell you everything God gave me, and then I'm going to take my seat. See, all this stuff I'm telling you, all this is in the Word. I'm not making none of this up. It's not fancy, but it's in the Word. See, because if we're going to get the church right, we got to get home right first and then when we come to church we got to learn to respect and reverence God's house this means when they have prayer that ain't time intermission time go talking and high five your friends and what's going on and what you doing at the church and we going to get some chicken and people praying trying to get a breakthrough so then what happens is this part of the church is church this part out there is King's Island. And then we wonder why people don't get breakthroughs. He said, man, you need to sit down. When God get finished, I will. <laughs> See, this is the stuff Paul was telling Timothy. Hey, you got to check this stuff early. You're going to have to stand against this, and it's not going to be a popularity contest. When he told me to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things you've heard of me, he said, commit this to faithful men. Do you notice that Jesus never called lazy men to ministry? If you're not showing up to your week services, don't expect to move up in the ministry. If you're not doing the things that you're supposed to do, then don't expect God to call you. Sisters, this is why you shouldn't look for a man just because he's built. And then we tell you don't marry him and then you get upset later. Always in the prayer line, pray for me. Pray for me. Pray that he'll come through. You knew he wasn't coming through when you was fooling with him. You knew he wasn't working when you was going to pay for all the dinner when y'all was going out. Now he's going to start working? <laughs> he 
He says, be strong. Be strong. God needs strong soldiers in the church. Faithful men in the church. Men, this, you don't hear this one a lot. Men of integrity. They don't need no cool daddies. Always looking at the sister, how you doing? Mm, you know, I got a word for you. The church need men that can be fathers and brothers to the sisters, can have a testimony. They ain't got to be worried. Well, I wonder what he going to do next. I can't be left alone with him. You know, he, he got two hands in the light and four other ones come out when you don't look. <laughs> integrity. Need sisters of integrity. You see all these single mothers around here. We need some mothers and aunts that can, can hold and help those other mothers raising those children. Sometimes they get overwhelmed. And they need some help. You remember how it was when you was locking the door when your children were little. And you still won't let them come in now and they grown. He says there, for endure hardness as a good soldier. See, everything I was telling you was leading to verse 4. It says, no man that wharf entangles himself again with the affairs of this life that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. We got to make sin be seen as sin. There's too much compromise. There's too much, well, you know, we, we trying to bring more people in the church for what? If Jesus Christ is not the focus of every message, not the focus of every song, not the focus of why we open the doors, then we need to shut the doors and go on home. Because Jesus Christ is the reason for every season. If he is not being presented, then all you're doing is wasting time. And then when people really get in trouble, this is why they keep leaving out the church. Because if you give them a false Christ, when they get in real trouble, they call on that false Christ you presented, and then nothing happens, and they say there was never anything to the church in the first place. Present Jesus the way he is written in the word of God. See, when you understand that God is without equal, when he has no match, when you understand that God walks on the storms that we're in, when he holds all things up by the power of his word, when he can walk into a situation and speak to inanimate objects and make them talk back to him, when you start to see Jesus as who he really is, then you will reverence him. Remember when Ezekiel saw him, the wheel in the middle of the wheel, and he saw the angels, and he saw the spirit moving. When the spirit moved, the angels and the wheel moved. And when the spirit stopped, the angels and the wheel stopped. And above that, he saw him sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. Isaiah saw him high and lifted up. Moses asked to see his glory. And he told him, if you see my glory, your ministry is over with. When you really see Jesus the way he really is, it won't be hard to tell you, come on, testify, saints. You won't be able to stop testifying because I've seen the glory of God. When you really see Jesus Christ the way he is, it won't be hard to reverence him. They'll have to tell you to stop singing because you have seen Jesus. When you really see Jesus, you'll be like Mary Magdalene. I cannot help but to pour my tears out on his feet. Because he delivered me from things I can't even speak about. When you see Jesus. Have you seen him? Have you really seen him? Sometimes when you see Jesus, you can't even tell people what's going on. 
They'll look at you funny. Why are you dancing all the time? Jesus showed up. Oh! When you see Jesus, he'll shake your very being. When you see Jesus, he'll walk into the room. Cancer will dry up. Heart attacks will stop. He'll come in and open deaf ears. Lift the blinded eyes. When Jesus comes in, devils will go down and worship. When you see Jesus, have you seen him? Have you seen Jesus? Have you seen him? When you really see Jesus, you won't have to be told to worship him. When you see Jesus, you'll just bow down. When you see Jesus, Jesus will even change your style of music. See, because when you play, demons will start to... <laughs> He'll change your song. You won't even get through a verse. <laughs> see, what God is calling us for, church, and you know this is the Holy Ghost because I'm shy. That's why I took my glasses off so I can't see you. <laughs> see what God is doing? He's telling you, you stop sitting there and being scared of the devil when he show up. It's time to get ready to rumble. Somebody needs to stand up and say, God, I'm going to stand. I'm going to fight, 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 fight. This is why God is putting you young people up. You say, how did I get in this position? God. Because God saw you could take a punch. See, the Bible says, having it done all to withstand. See, that what makes a great boxer is not his ability to throw a punch. It's his ability to take one. So you're going to have to get hit in the ribs. Get hit in the leg. Get hit in the head. And watch your family get hit and still show up and say, God is a good God. Oh, yes, he is. You're going to have to have pain in your body and still go and still show up on your night to preach. And when it ain't your night to preach, you got to still show up and still stand. And they have to hurt, hurt in the church, hurt out the church, be sick, go back, go to the doctor, go back, and still have the testimony that can't nobody. It's time to fight. It's time to fight. Satan done took the gloves off. Guess what? It's time for us. See, when Elder Derek was talking about that, <laughs> I saw something different. You know, in the cage yard matches, when they get ready to fight, they go like this, too. It's time to look that devil in the eye and say, You're not going to come in this church no more. You're not going to come in my house no more. You're not going to take my body no more. You're not going to run my job no more. You're not going to do this at my school no more. Not on my watch. Not why I'm here. Because I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. And if I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. Don't drop the baton. Don't drop the baton. Some of y'all don't understand why you're standing next to your pastor all the time. Why you're standing next to mothers all the time. See, what's happening is God is training you. So he got to yoke you up with somebody who know more than you. So all you're doing, you say, I feel like I'm just walking around in circles. I'm just walking around in circles. No, you're not. You're watching. 
you're learning. You're in training. It's like, man, it seems like all I do is just go here, carry this, do that, go get some water. No, you're not. You're in training. Because guess what? One day, just like Paul did Timothy, watch this. He gonna say, I'm gonna leave you right there while I go do something else. I'm gonna leave you right here. He may move you somewhere else and say, I want you to stand there and do that. I'm gonna go over here and do this. But I want you to be strong. Don't flake, don't tap out. Stay right there. And when I get back, I'm gonna move you somewhere else. Why? Because he's training you for service. And in order to train you for service, you got to get hit. Which means that when you stand next to your leader, the things that they're suffering, you may suffer. But you can't run. You can't run. And you say, well, I'm having some trouble now. Then you need to see Jesus. You need to see Jesus. I'll leave you with this one story. Seems that there was a prophet with his young protege. And they were surrounded by this army. And the protege started to panic. And he said, why are you so calm? Don't you see what's going on? And he prayed. He said, God, open his eyes. Open his eyes. Your leader is praying for you. God, open their eyes. There's some mother or deacon by you saying, God, open their eyes. And when God opens your eyes, then you will see why you have power, love, and will give you a sound mind because you will see God in all of his glory as much as you can handle. Word of caution, don't ask for too much you can't handle. Don't ask for things you can't handle. Be careful what you ask for. I'm telling you from experience because I did it. And I had to pray, God, take that thing off of me. I said, God, I can't handle this. Take it back. He said, you ain't gave me that either. Take it back, Lord. God is calling us tonight, especially you young people. And let me speak to the black young men, and then I'm going to sit down. There's a hit list out for you. You are on a hit list. They're trying to undereducate you, trying to keep you drunk and weeded out all the time, trying to sabotage you with sex, trying to keep you down with the music. They're doing everything they can to keep you because once you get a hold of the word of God, God will make you what a real man should be. So God is calling you. Will you answer the call? You accepted one challenge tonight. Now I'm presenting you with another one and a mandate from the Lord. Whatever baton is handed in your hand, drop it. Don't drop the baton. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. spoke to you through that message. What somebody say from fear to faith. Amen. The Lord has a way that look at our, everybody in here tonight and he'll speak something to everybody's heart. Amen. And if you are in here and the Lord spoke to you tonight it's your time. Now, it, it won't take us a long time to make an altar call because if it, you're in here and you know you need to be saved, you ought to make your way to this altar. Off the strength of the word of God. Don't wait till tomorrow, but do it today. Amen? And if you're in here as a young saint, an old saint, and you know you're not where you need to be, you ought to make your way to the altar. Amen?
From fear, I think they said, to faith. You can also hold your hands up. It means I surrender. Do we got anybody want to surrender tonight? Well, we thank God for this service tonight. It's been a, been a dynamite service, haven't it? The singing's been good. The word's been good. Hallelujah. And you can leave out of here a different way than you came. Have you seen Jesus? Amen. Amen. He makes the difference. When Jesus show up, he don't just break yokes. He destroy them. And give you the power to live right. Are you living right? It's one thing to come to church, but it's another thing to come to Jesus.